Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jessica. I bring in the high vibrational energy known as Abraham. And if you don't know who Abraham is and want to know who Abraham is, I put a link in the description below um, that will give you kind of a background or introduction to Abraham. In this video, we're going to be talking about the collective conscious and unconscious minds and the shift or the integration into the higher collective one mind of New Earth 5D. And this goes hand in hand with the merging of the timelines into a higher New Earth one timeline as well. We're also going to be talking about Lemuria and Atlantis and the roles that they played in the whole collective conscious and unconscious minds as well. We're going to go over all of this in the channel transmission. So let's get started. So what came through was that think of the collective conscious as a quote unquote cloud that stores all of the collective conscious memories and experiences from all the lifetimes lived on your planet Earth including the fear and negative emotions, experiences, and behaviors. Your mind, especially your third dimensional mind, is connected to this quote-unquote cloud. The memories and experiences of this collective conscious quote-unquote cloud is accessible to the collective, the people of your planet, through the mind. This is also what some people consider the quote-unquote hive mind. This is also the energy of what has been circulating on your planet for far too long. The energy in this conscious collective mind, or the quote-unquote cloud, recycles through lifetimes on your planet, not only in the quote-unquote cloud, but in your connection to it, through your mind, your heart, and your energy. Fear, negativity, joy, shame, fun, love, conditional love, unconditional love, abuse, struggle, poverty, lack, laughter, all of it is mixed in one big quote-unquote cloud. The negative energy, emotions, experiences, and behaviors are what holds that quote-unquote cloud down, making it more of a heavy-weighted cloud, a darker, muddier cloud than what it should be in the eyes of Source. So at this point, I was still trying to grasp the difference between the conscious and the unconscious on the level that Abraham was talking about versus what we as physical beings have been taught all of our lives or, you know, in education. So I guess, quote unquote, scientifically, we've been told that there are memories from our physical experience that exist in the unconscious. For example, you know, the repressed memories. So I was trying to figure out the difference between the conscious and the unconscious in this aspect. So I asked Abraham to explain more. And what came through was that as a physical being having an experience on earth, you are connected to your mind. Your mind holds consciousness. Everything you experience is integrated and held in this quote unquote storage container of your mind or your immediate consciousness. Now your consciousness has many different layers, many if not most of them being very, very, very deep layers of your consciousness, much deeper than you can even imagine. Your scientific studies of the conscious and unconscious mind were simply just breaking down the conscious mind into two parts, the easily accessible conscious mind and the quote, harder to access unquote conscious mind, which they called the quote unconscious end quote. Now, when we talk about the collective conscious and collective unconscious, we are lifting up into a soul perspective and not a scientific mind perspective. Your collective is joined together in co-creating your experience. In your co-creation, you also joined in both a conscious collective mind and an unconscious collective mind. If you remove the physical body, knowledge of conscious and unconscious come from the stored energy of the collective in the hive mind and the soul mind. Instant integration towards knowledge is opening in the collective joined mind. And this basically means that we're integrating more knowledge through our joining of a one collective mind. And this joining of that one 
collective higher 5D mind is actually going to be the integration of the unconscious and the conscious minds put together into this higher frequency one mind. And this is what we're going to be going over in this video. They go on to say that in the lost unconscious mind is knowledge about lost knowledge, integrated with soul knowledge, and integrated with intense knowing very much so that all is truly well in the most not well physical world around you. Because in the collective unconscious mind, you are connected to all things in the non-physical. In the lost unconscious mind is knowledge about lost knowledge, integrated with soul knowledge. Knowledge in the collective unconscious is opening due to expansion of consciousness in the physical state. It is making the collective unconscious memories become more tangible and real for many on the ascension path as they raise their consciousness to meet the frequency of the higher collective unconscious. The collective unconscious exists at a higher frequency. As we stated, the collective conscious mind is like the quote unquote cloud that houses all the collective conscious memories and experiences from all the lifetimes lived on your planet Earth, good and bad. It is the quote unquote hive mind. It is directly connected to your incarnations and physical experiences on planet Earth. Because it contains the energy of duality, it contains lower frequency energy. So here they're making the big distinction between the collective unconscious and the collective conscious. So the collective unconscious is a higher frequency, higher mind, and the collective conscious mind is the lower frequency um, hive mind, which is a bit more of a muddier mind. They go on to say that the unconscious on a soul level is not connected to the physical body and physical experiences on your planet in as directly a way as your conscious mind is. The unconscious is connected to your soul. It is the storage space for your soul memories as well as the collective soul memories, but also the storage space for soul truth, source knowledge, and other non-physical knowledge that you hold on a soul level. The collective unconscious does not hold negative behavior, but holds light and higher perspective. The collective unconscious is of higher frequency and holds everything that the collective conscious holds, but also so much more. The collective unconscious holds the greater aspect of you and the souls that you are co-creating with. It is all mixed into this quote-unquote soup of the greater, higher frequency, collective unconscious. If you take the same memory, which, for example, maybe it was a memory that was not seen or experienced as quote-unquote good in the physical, this same memory, experience, behavior, etc., whatever it was, will be recorded in the collective conscious and unconscious, as well as in the individual consciousness. In the collective conscious energy, this memory or experience or behavior, whatever, will have the duality attached to it because the collective conscious exists at that lower frequency level with duality in your 3D Earth existence. It will be seen and remembered as quote unquote bad. This same memory will also integrate into the collective higher frequency unconscious to be stored. However, in the collective unconscious, this memory rises up to meet the frequency of the collective unconscious so that it integrates the higher perspective of the memory, growing from the one very small duality perspective of that memory into a more 360 degree higher sensing the woods beneath the trees soul perspective. In this higher collective unconscious quote unquote soup, the quote unquote bad is integrated into the quote unquote good in a way that a higher and more oneness perspective experience and energy can be found in order to transmute or transform the bad into oneness and higher frequency energy. Abraham goes on to say that at this moment, not everyone is able to tap into discovering more of the collective 
unconscious mind because the collective unconscious knowledge is very much included or connected to the illusion or the belief of the individual, meaning that the collective unconscious is tied to the belief of the individual in the greater aspect of who they are. It is connected to the soul and the knowledge of past lives and lost knowledge and connection to source and soul knowledge. If the individual does not believe in the greater aspect of who they are, they will never be able to tap into the collective unconscious mind. I asked Abraham, so if I were to reincarnate on a whole other planet in a whole other galaxy in my next life, would I still have access to the same collective unconscious that I have access to right now? And what came through was, no, you would be connected to a whole different collective unconscious co-created with the souls involved in that experience. However, you would take your knowledge and memories and integrate all of your experiences and knowledge into the new collective unconscious that you would be reincarnated into. So Abraham goes on to say that as you move further along in your collective ascension process and expansion of consciousness, your collective mind will also ascend and transform into a more 5D collective mind. Currently, your collective conscious mind is a very 3D duality based joined mind. It is joined in negativity and lower vibrational experiences, behaviors, emotions, memories, and energy. Through your ascension process will be the release of this 3D conscious mind and further integration of the 5D or higher frequency unconscious mind rooted in the heart, in love, and oneness. Okay, so now Abe wants to shift a bit and bring in the energy of Lemuria and Atlantis in the connection to the collective conscious and unconscious minds. So this kind of goes back to the videos that I did about inner lost knowledge. And if you haven't yet watched those videos, you might find it useful to watch those videos first or after this one to get a better idea of what I'll be talking about. And I'm not going to go over those again too much here because there's a lot to cover, but I'll put the links to those videos, part one, part two, and part three below in the description. But I think it's part one that would be the most useful in what we're going to cover for this video. So in part one of Inner Lost Knowledge, we spoke about my past lives in Lemuria and some knowledge that I held regarding Lemuria and Atlantis and the downfall of these ancient civilizations. We also talked about how important it is for you as a lost knowledge holder to bring forward your lost knowledge from these lifetimes in Lemuria and or Atlantis if you had lifetimes then because we're going through that same great golden shift of Gaia that they went through, um, the energies very much parallel each other. And there are many key pieces of information and knowledge that we had during that time that will really help us to move forward into New Earth 5D as we go through this shift. So since I put out that first video on Lemurian Atlantis, I've been getting more and more information that really builds upon the knowledge that I shared in that video because I guess my lost knowledge started opening up and um, the knowledge that's been coming through has kind of layered upon each other. And of course, you know, it's like you open the flood doors and everything starts coming through. So I think the flood doors are slowly starting to open. So I'm going to share a bit more to layer upon that video here. Now bear with me, there's a lot of information, but it'll tie into the whole collective conscious and unconscious mind topic that we've been talking about in this video, but on a whole nother level. <laughs> so um, very, very, very broken down to start. I had heard a while ago that there was some sort of cataclysm during the downfall of Atlantis and Lemuria. And I think Edgar Casey remote viewed or channeled information regarding some sort of asteroid or meteorite or something. Uh, don't quote me on that, but there's information about an asteroid or some, some outside force that struck the planet during that time. I'm not 100% sure. But what happened was my friend Yara from the YouTube channel Random Acts of Kindness, she channels an energy collective very similar to Abraham called the Seven Pillars of Light, the Elohim. 
Now, Yara did a remote viewing in which she saw this giant cataclysm during the fall of Atlantis, and I'll put a link to her video below as well for you to check that out. Um, she found that through this remote viewing that she did, that the cataclysm was not, she didn't feel that it was an asteroid or something from outside of the planet's atmosphere. She found that it was something within the atmosphere already, but didn't quite know what. So she came to me and asked for my take on the information in her remote viewing, and so I tapped into Abe, and this is what came through. Abraham said, Gilded cataclysm that Yara witnessed was not from where you call space, we call home, not from space, but from open energy, strong energy, open energy in destruction of Atlantis technology and repercussions of technology of Atlantis backfiring. Cataclysm was due not from the gilded, open, strong energy of Gaia, meaning not from um, weather patterns or weather disasters or internal energy of Gaia, but of intense, open energy of technology from Atlantis destroying in itself. So I thought to myself, you know, like a nuclear bomb, and what came through was technology, similar to open energy knowledge of technology in Jessica's awareness as quote unquote nuclear joined with energy of technology in Atlantis. However, quote unquote nuclear technology in Atlantis was not like the nuclear energy on current earth. So just to clarify, I asked, okay, so the big cataclysm was not a meteor hitting the earth or anything from outside of earth. And they said, no. And I asked, so it was a nuclear explosion? And they said, yes. And I said, but not in the way that we know it today with chemicals or a bomb. And they said, no, it was energetic. So then I asked, what exactly did the explosion do to earth? And what came through was that the Atlanteans and Lemurians also were going through a gilded golden shift of Gaia at that time. We've talked about this. However, right now, we are currently going through a shift into an ascended timeline, a higher dimension and higher energy frequency. At the time of Lemuria and Atlantis, they were already on an ascended timeline of higher frequency and higher dimension, and their gilded golden shift was into a lower timeline and frequency and dimension. This is the ebb and flow of the galactic cycle. So they were shifting down, I guess, or descending in a way, and we are ascending. So Abraham goes on to say that the cataclysm during Atlantis and Lemuria knowingly hindered Earth. It lost the knowledge of oneness and love, and into the dark, instantly Gaia went, in loaded, lost knowing that it would take another 26,000 years, a very long time, to finally come out of the giant hole the Atlanteans put Gaia in not knowing that intense energy experiments would plunge Gaia into the dark hole, but open energy of duality, opened energy of lost knowing, not love and not light in the hearts and minds of Atlanteans. So what Abe is saying is that technically, yes, the experiments of Atlantis were what ultimately plunged Gaia into the dark hole, but it wasn't necessarily their fault. It was the energy of strong duality that they were integrating and embodying and responding to through this big, ginormous galactic energy that was playing out in the physical. Abraham goes on to say that um, those on the planet currently with Atlantean open energy still very much connected to Atlantis through their past lives increases the ability to hinder open energy of joined oneness and love if they are not able to find not only love and oneness, but not love and not oneness in their hearts and minds. By doing this, it opens forgiveness in joined hearts and minds of lost Atlanteans who took part in the downfall of Gaia. Lost knowledge is not only important for love and oneness remembering, but knowledge of not love and not oneness is just as important in remembering so that very much so, wholeness can be finally achieved in knowing that there cannot be light without darkness. 
It is not always a bad thing to remember the lost, not love, and not oneness, because in so many ways it helps the whole knowing world to integrate wholeness in strength of oneness, in knowing the instant downfall of love and oneness, lost Gaia, and lost join love and oneness in the world. And I then asked, what caused this intense duality? And what came through was that, Following lost join hearts of Adam and Eve created a portal of intense duality. Over time, duality existed, not in large amounts, but it lost steam along the way. Lost to humans on earth now is reality of knowledge joined with love and oneness between Lemurians and Atlanteans, meaning that there was actually a time of peace between the Atlanteans and Lemurians on the planet. What caused the separation between Lemurians and Atlanteans was not love and oneness separation, but not love and not oneness separation in growing hearts and minds of Atlanteans. Knowledge of the growing duality within Atlanteans joined the knowledge of Lemurians through the open mind portal of one mind. Being the collective conscious mind at that time, the Lemurians and the Atlanteans shared in that collective conscious mind, that one mind. Open portal of love and oneness by Gaia in Lemurian waters helped Lemuria to hold love and oneness despite strong duality in this one mind, the collective conscious mind. This quote unquote join mind, meaning the collective conscious mind of Lemurians and Atlanteans were in the awareness of Lemurians, so they created not only a gilded separate mind known now as the collective unconscious mind, but the Lemurians also created, with the help of Gaia, instant, instant, instant manifestation, lost not only to the Atlanteans, but lost to the people of current earth as well. Abraham has been teaching manifestation through the vessel Esther for many years in hopes to remind people who they truly are in their energy of oneness and love frequencies. But what has not happened yet until now and known only to Abraham in the mission and unfolding of Abraham on your planet is that in knowing who you truly are, you must also know your past as Lemurians and Atlanteans on your planet during this very important shift into love and oneness reality in connection to the intense, intense train to downfall of very important lost civilizations of Atlantis and Lemuria on your planet. Known only to Abraham in the mission and unfolding of Abraham on your planet is that knowing who you truly are in Atlantis and Lemuria is that absolutely in every way you can not only create your own reality, but known only to Abraham and not dwelled upon because we teach empowerment, is that you can also lose your reality very much at the drop of a hat too in your current earth reality. So what they just said is that... um, Lemurians were very much in tune. They knew about this collective conscious one mind. And knowing that the Atlanteans were kind of going into this downfall and Lemurians needing to hold this space of oneness and love, Lemurians created this unconscious collective mind to hold the oneness and love knowledge that they held. And in addition, they also put the knowledge of instant manifestation into this collective unconscious mind. And we're going to further delve into this. People who already have that knowledge of law of attraction, laws of the universe, creating your reality, thoughts becoming things, vibrational match, alignment, non-physical vortex, co-creation. People know these things already, or they're learning their power right now. So the next step is this ability to apply all of that into co-creating new earth and retrieving lost knowledge from ancient Lemuria, Atlantis, and other civilizations to help in that co-creation process of new earth 5D. The portal of oneness and love is very much available to people who want it in their hearts and minds. In this final chapter on earth with Abraham, they have the intense mission to help people find their 10,000 year old or more lost knowledge in hearts and minds and open joined hearts and minds in love and oneness. 
So I asked Abe, you know, can you explain more about the unconscious mind that the Lemurians created as well as the increase in duality? And what came through was yes, Lemurians oneness and love knowledge was hidden, not in the conscious mind where Atlanteans joined in the mind with Lemurians and where they could access, but in the unconscious mind where only the Lemurians joined in love and oneness could access, as well as those joined in love and oneness could access. They then went on to talk about linear timelines and the reality of duality opening multiple timelines. So in the time of Lemurian Atlantis, they existed um, not in linear time, but when they plunged into the lower dimensions is when the linear timeline started to take effect. And so I got a little bit confused, so I asked them to explain. I said, can you explain more about this, this whole timeline information? And what came through was that Lemurians and Atlanteans had a more so one timeline, like how you are headed into 5D one timeline. There was a reality of duality in Lemuria and Atlantis, but the fall created a more intense reality of duality because the earth plunged into lower dimensions where the reality of duality existed much more strongly and intensely. Multiple timelines did not exist in Lemuria and Atlantis. Multiple timelines were created after the fall of Lemuria and Atlantis in the lower dimensions because the stronger polarity and duality energy created stronger polarity and duality in the energy and consciousness of individuals incarnated on the planet. The strong energy of emotion in the consciousness, especially in mass, like um, worldwide events that trigger strong energy and emotion, especially polarity based with, you know, there's a good side and a bad side. This creates offshoots of timelines in response to those very strong emotions and energy. Abe said that the knowledge of love and oneness, which was stored in the collective unconscious by the Lemurians, was lost when the reality of duality got stronger as the world plunged into lower density and frequency and dimensions. And this is because through the offshoots of multiple timelines, in response to the collective conscious mind, the collective unconscious now became buried even deeper below the collective conscious mind and offshoots of multiple timelines. Abe then went on to say that the unconscious memories of the Lemurians and lost knowledge of love and oneness is only surfacing now in the conscious minds of very awakened Lemurians who center around love and oneness. They are finally able to access love and oneness knowledge in the unconscious, because in existing in 5D New Earth already, the lost knowledge of Lemurians surface in the one mind of love and oneness, mostly in 5D New Earth mind, where lost knowledge is held. So basically, in raising your energy and opening your consciousness to exist mostly in 5D New Earth illusion or belief, wherever you are, you are connected to the 5D one mind of higher frequency consciousness, which is that collective unconscious merged with the collective conscious to create this higher one mind connected through the heart. By tapping into that higher one mind of 5D, you are able to access the information and knowledge of oneness and love and other lost knowledge that you hold from your soul memories. Abraham said that lost knowledge is held not only in lost mind, but in lost hearts of the Lemurians and Atlanteans. The unconscious mind is stored in the hearts of people on earth. It is not stored in the mind, very much where the conscious mind is stored. Then I asked, how did the Lemurians create the unconscious collective mind? Like, how do you create that? And what came through was that the Lemurians were more knowledgeable in the heart, in love, and in oneness. The collective conscious mind was created as a one mind or a hive mind for the collective experiences on Earth in the, quote, atmosphere, end quote, of Earth, in response to the energy and consciousness of the collective. 
When the earth began going through its great shift, the Lemurians were in tune with this and they knew ahead of time. The portal that was made available to Lemuria by Gaia so that the Lemurians could keep an eye on Atlantis showed the Lemurians the downfall of Atlantis. In preparation for the great shift and the coming downfall of the great civilizations, the Lemurians, in their knowledge and connection to the heart, created a collective unconscious mind. In truth, however, this collective unconscious quote-unquote mind was not connected to the mind at all. It was connected through the heart. Lemurians were connected to each other through the heart. In the heart is the connection to the soul. So, on a soul level, the collective unconscious quote-unquote mind was created, or rather manifested, because Lemurians were master manifestors, in response to the connected hearts of Lemurians on the planet and their desire to keep their knowledge of oneness and love safe. And also, just as lower dimensional multiple timelines respond to the collective conscious hive mind on your planet, the higher dimensional one whole timeline, the timeline of New Earth 5D and beyond, responds to the higher frequency collective unconscious quote unquote one mind. Then I asked out of curiosity, can you talk more about manifestation that you stated that the Lemurians created? Like, wasn't there manifestation before then? And what came through was that love and oneness joined Lemurians with knowledge of love and oneness. This knowledge joined Lemurians with massive Nile River knowledge of creating your own reality. So they, in aligning to love and oneness in hearts and minds, were able to manifest everything they desired. They did not have to know or learn manifestation because they already knew it, much like a seventh sense, as Abe described it. They did not have to learn it. It would have been like teaching them how to breathe or hear or see or taste or touch or sense. To manifest was ingrained in their higher frequency and higher strand DNA. The ability to manifest is attached to or connected to your ability to connect to the love and oneness frequency in the heart. What Abraham has been teaching you all on the leading edge of creation is tapping into the non-physical vibrational vortex of your desires and your creations, which in essence exists in the collective unconscious heart mind. By creating the collective unconscious mind, the Lemurians created a space, a quote unquote vortex to hold the knowledge of love and oneness to be accessed by those who are able to tap into this space through their hearts in the frequency of love and oneness. Now in this vortex is the ability as well to manifest your desires, turn your thoughts into things and co-create with others because you align to that space of not only love and oneness, but of manifestation. So the more that you tap into this collective one unconscious mind of higher frequency, soon to be the ascended one conscious mind, you're going to tap into more and more of your ability to manifest, even instantly manifest. Now keep in mind that manifestation can go both ways. Higher frequency manifestation, turning your higher vibrational thoughts, ideas, dreams, and desires requires you to align to the frequency of this higher vibrational collective unconscious vortex of creation. Lower frequency manifestations, the manifestations that respond to your lower frequency thoughts, emotions, and vibrations easily come into manifestation from your alignment to the frequency of the lower vibrational collective conscious vortex of creation, that recycled energy. We have taught through Esther that if you are able to align to the higher vibrational non-physical vortex for just 17 seconds a day, you will be able to create a tipping point in the manifestation of your desires. In what was known only to Abraham is that this higher vibrational non-physical vortex also offered you the ability to tap into the collective unconscious mind by holding that space of love and oneness. 
with more and more of you tapping into your non-physical vibrational vortexes, what you now know as existing in the collective unconscious mind, the higher mind of love and oneness created by the Lemurians, you were able to bring more and more awareness to this collective unconscious mind, which was once lost in the heaps and piles of collective conscious multiple timelines and deep, deep depths. By bringing the collective unconscious back into your awareness as thought creators on the leading edge of creation, you were able to unknowingly manifest not only the tipping point of your creations and desires, but the tipping point of accessing the collective unconscious into the collective conscious mind. So Abe is showing me a fishing line and through tapping into our ability as creators of our reality and tapping into this higher mind of the collective unconscious, we were as a collective reeling the collective unconscious back into our awareness. We were making it more and more tangible to integrate this collective unconscious, this this mind of oneness and love into the collective conscious or into the consciousness, at least of our individual beings, expanding our own consciousness, which helps to raise the collective one mind, which was the collective conscious mind, into transforming ultimately into the one higher mind of New Earth 5D. As more and more of us tap into the 5D one mind, that collective unconscious higher mind, through our personal and collective ascension, we're able to integrate it more and more into our collective one mind. And finally, I asked, is there anything else you need to tell me about the releasing of the collective conscious mind and the integration of the collective unconscious mind? And what came through was yes. In the months and in the years following the intense energy upgrades on your planet, the mind and the consciousness will continue to shift. Those who have love and oneness in their hearts have already shifted into this new mind. In this new mind, the collective unconscious created by the Lemurians in the lost gilded 13th dimension will in a way take over as the single hive mind of the collective. In this shift of mind, the collective conscious mind will hinder to the point of completely eventually opening into the unconscious mind and integrate not as the conscious mind it once was, but finally as energy of knowledge of love and oneness, open to heart-based people on the planet who can help to integrate more love and oneness. In opening hearts and minds, not in the known awareness of people, will be this great shift of mind. It will be subtle, not abrupt, in known awareness of very few people on the planet who will help the conscious transform into the unconscious. Timelines are integrated into this new, higher one mind shift. As you integrate more and more of the higher collective unconscious mind into a higher collective one mind, the timelines will also respond to the clearing or integrating of the lower frequency collective conscious mind. This will ultimately merge the multiple timelines into one final higher new earth timeline for your collective. And since channeling this information, I have actually received even further information in regards to this whole merging of timelines and the one mind in connection to a more of a spiral timeline, which I'm going to be talking about in an upcoming video is there's just so much information. Um, but until then, I know that this was quite a handful of a video. It was really long, but I hope it made sense. Um, and remember that you don't necessarily have to understand any of the messages that I put out. If you are listening to these messages and receiving, being open to receiving it, you are integrating the energy, the frequency of the message on a deeper level, which is what Abe has told me over and over again. So just listening to this video will help you to integrate um, more and more and open yourself up more and more as you continue on your own ascension path and journey. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to get to them. Thank you so much. Until the next video, Abraham and Jessica leave you in oneness and love.